All right, and welcome back to another tutorial. I'm so excited to do this one. I think the last time we covered uh, Caterpillar events, but the basics. And well, I've been up for, I guess, the last five nights kind of pushing, I think, 20 or 30 hours trying to, to finish this this uh, silly, silly thing. And um, I got really frustrated. I've been trying to get uh, a whole bunch of people's input on code, tried to get it to work. And while the uh, original Caterpillar was good, uh, it wasn't great. So I am very, very lucky and happy to have run into um, uh, someone else's work by the name of Kenton. So all credits goes out to the guy. Uh, love this. This is going to be the actual full complete way to create a caterpillar on um, RPG Maker 2003. Excuse me. And we're going to be able to use multiple characters. So I'm going to link in the description uh, below the actual file because he put it up as an RAR file. You'll have to unzip it. Um, so I'll give you the link to where to download his program. And this is his program right here, what you see. Uh, I'll show you it uh, beta tested. And then I'll walk through all the things he did to make the uh, program work. Um, what I was originally doing was having the uh, actual image or the uh, character actor follow me around on the screen. And this was a better idea, which was actually move the event to the character. Um, you can see the characters in my party nice and neat up here. And these are going to be the characters that will follow me around here. So let me just open this. Um, give me a second. I'm currently in the middle of a snack. I haven't had dinner yet, so it's kind of halfway through me being unprofessional. <laughs> All right, here we go. And hopefully I can make these tutorials a bit quicker. So this is this is Kenton's tutorial. All credits go to him. Um, I'm I'm simply uh, just showing you uh, his his work. Uh, I'll link his his uh, his stuff and and uh, email and all that. Or it's it's all in there anyways. But uh, anyways, we'll hit new game. And uh, so I start off here. And let's just walk through it. Welcome to his template project. Yep. Yep. Okay. So what he's done is he's uh, made it into two sections, which is gathering all the party in a, an event and then using those events linked to appear underneath the um, the main character and that you can pass through them or, as you would say, have the characters pass under. They're the ones that are phased. And I think I went through phasing in the first um, tutorial. And anyways, um, the, this is for vehicles but we'll skip that. So let's go into the town that he created for RPG Maker. All right, so um, if you can see what happened is the event characters immediately showed up. I can't really point to them, but they're underneath the character. Um, and they've been loaded to appear underneath the character. Now let's move the character. So now we have a link of four characters and you can see that they follow in a nice even pattern. You talk to some of the villagers um, that that Kenton wrote code for. They 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 tell you uh, hints on um, what each function does. So, yes, when you paste, copy and paste each code into a new area. What you've what you've built is is uh, referenced and all set for each um, character so that they appear uh, underneath 
the character when the uh, uh, the map begins. Um, sorry, uh, this boy here. Um, can if if we look at the coding, he'll he'll run through all the players, so you can see yeah briefly there. Have the correct ID. Um, up here is uh, thanks for trying the project out. So uh, this is Kenton. Uh, he, he has his email there. If you have any questions, I'm I'm not sure if this is a very very old project, but you might be able to reach him. Um, yep. All right, so I, I added this. If you notice very quickly in the top left, we can, we can return to it. Um, see, what would have happened is up in this top left-hand corner where you originally saw each character, they're very quickly taken from the phase event and put underneath the character. Uh, there, there's a there's an easy way around this so it doesn't look as embarrassing. Like yeah, very quickly the top left hand corner. I'll show you one more time. This is what would typically happen. Then they 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 uh, latch onto your party. So to to avoid that, um, we'll get right into the code. Uh, I'll I'll show you what you can do. So I'm gonna exit out since we've looked at the whole tutorial. Um, those are where the characters are, and I made this extra map just to test juggling between multiple characters. That's where they are. Um, what you'd do is uh, you'd, er, you'd originally start them with an, a new page and just leave it a uh, blank. So this would be blank, and this would be your first page. And here you'd say or you'd reverse these two, so this comes first, obviously, parallel process below the characters. And you'd have a switch that says your your second character to appear. So you could just do we can we can test this one. So if that is on, then move the code. Uh but else it's gonna be off. Um, and you would apply that to um, the uh, the beginning of uh, the, the the map. So, if you were moving maps, uh, let's say it would move here, you'd turn on a switch that says the the character it doesn't appear, or uh, it's it's going to appear, and then it would start blank and then appear. Does that make sense? You could give it we could give it a try. I'll show you what I mean. This is just for uh, smooth, smooth transitions. Um, so let's do this. Cut paste it here. Let's give this uh, this I don't know. It can be any character. It doesn't doesn't really matter. And this is gonna start blank. So turn that off. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We could get rid of this uh, because it's just an, an extra character. It's not a big deal. Um, let's just test this really quickly. This is sort of besides the point, but um, we'll we'll get into the code in in one one quick second. So. Uh, this this map is cleverly placed so you can't see the events, um, but here you, you oh, oops. Um, what did I do wrong? Oh, you would make this an auto run, 
and then um, turn this, yeah, turn the switch on. So I, I did this incorrectly. Turn this on um, in an auto run. Uh, you don't need to, you actually don't need to put it here, in here. I don't know where I where I put it. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even code it. Um, that's that would that would be why. Oh, oops. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna get. To directly into the uh, the character coding, but I, I'm sure you can find a, a workaround. Okay, so the beginning of the map, these events go to the character on position. So what he's done is if you if you click here, you're going to want to create an event that says uh, positioning in an auto run below the characters. So that's going to start as soon as you uh, touch the map. And from there, what you're going to do is you're going to create variables. So if I look in here, he's created variables um, for the hero and the player's coordinate. So that's that's easy. All you have to do is um, right click uh, or, or what you can do is even um, click a uh, double click for your event commands, click on control variables click on these double dots and then from there just start typing in the name of every single uh, uh, variable that's needed. So if you want to take a minute to sort of pause your screen and just type out everything. Uh, from there, uh, keep note what numbers are being used and how they're being used into each um, character. So this is this is the lo this is the the hero's location so you then this is the second player's coordinates this is the third and this is the final player's coordinates and these are all brought up before anything happens and they set the event location to where you are which is 101 and 102 which is the player's coordinates i'll i'll, sh I'll show you what i mean so you have the hero, you want to click on event, and then you want to click on player's x coordinate. Hit OK, and do the same for the y coordinate. Then this is a new variable, which is going to be uh, down here. So just uh, make sure you know which ones those are. Um, and by previous hero and previous second and previous third, what he's saying is having those uh, underneath each other. Okay, so you're going to do that and continue to map out players X to X and Y to Y. Once you've done that, you're going to do set event location. Now that can be found on the second page set event location. Now there's two types of event locations. There's from variables and there's from this location. You want to click on variables and not on the event location because your event location is set to change every time. It's not going to be just in one place and the uh, characters aren't going to be in one place. So um, what he's done is He's set the event, which is the follower, and he's mapped that to, once again, to the hero's coordinates. And this is what I mean by rather than move an image, he picked the event. And what I mean by event, which is what we will be creating, are these images. So that image is the event follower. Then this would be the third, which is another event and this is the rear guard and those four events or three events sorry i need to learn how to count are all going to you uh the character wherever you may end up on the map and uh 
that's that's the 101 102 that is you um per se and then erase the event because uh, all of this has been set uh condensed to where you are um it can it can it can clear now so hit okay uh auto run and below characters that's also important and you'll want to paste that on every every map and from there and this is where it gets very tricky and i might have a tough time explaining this we're going to create our first follower so set move route this event skip and through on um this is what i was talking about last time through is the phasing and this event is um it's it's basically the entire sum of the event of the event page. Um, this event will be on every page along with all the other like that's an event that's an event that's all the other characters. But this event will always be there for you. So do this event through on, and skip the action if you cannot move. Then we're gonna copy the same or the character coordinates are, which is you. Now this is where it gets interesting. Um, second X and second Y, we've already made these variables because you created them right above the hero, or right below the hero. Uh, and then we're gonna take this event uh, and its X coordinate. Okay. I'm going to try try and explain this is that um, the second character is going to be moving on top of the first character and their coordinates. Again, I, I I'm I'm not an expert with this this code at all. I, I just I've I've kind of I'm trying to learn as as much as you guys are in this in this regard so just i i just follow this and then try and figure out for yourself what this means completely i'm sorry well, i'm sorry i'm a terrible host but uh you know let's just <laughs> keep going um comment movement so oh this is um you you can recognize similar code that we had at the beginning uh, you'll want to copy and paste that same code. Uh, I already explained how that works. If the second character is following you, you want it to track uh, your movements. And this uh, conditional branch of the hero is showing um, you and which way you're facing and how you're moving. And if you're doing that in... The, this event as a whole, then the second character is going to do the same. So I think I understand this. Excuse me. I'm glad he wrote the uh, the comments. So this is positioning movement. I, th I believe that this is the, the phasing of it all. Um, you're going to want to create two conditional branches that says if the previous hero is not the same as the hero on the x-axis which means that if the hero it's 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 letting the character know that it's it's moved and to follow um each each of its tracked movements and the same thing for the y-axis uh you can add hero moved uh wherever the uh, the control switch hero moved third moved and second moved so these are these are control switches versus control variables be careful with that um you're going to make three switches and a uh, a bunch of variables um and if the hero moved is on then you're going to turn it off and have the previous hero and the x and y grid go to the 
go to you, which means uh, over overlap you. Um, the, the the variable at 101 is uh, is the uh, hero at x. So the the very first two. Um, so the the it'll equal on top of you, and then this will will it's so it's checking to see if if you are not on top of the hero, and if you're not, then move the hero, and if you are on top of the hero, then turn it off and make sure that the previous hero, which is the second hero, uh, is overlapping the main hero. So the, these are the new uh, phasing events that allow the uh, character to overlap the hero. Um, positioning, we've done this before. So just get the main hero's coordinates and add uh, one, uh, subtract one on the Y. I, I encourage that you guys pause this uh, video, by the way, to just... Uh, start adding in all these variables um, just watching the screen and honestly just copying everything down including the comments so you know and I'll go as slow as I can um, as best as I can for you to take uh, you know pictures and shots of, of, of each uh, section so Finally, this is the moving. So we're now comparing the second variable to the uh, the first. We've already done this. If it's less, so if it's behind the hero, move it right and have the through on, uh, so that the the hero can can move back and and forth. Um, if it if it's uh, greater than, which means if if it's on the uh, flip side, then it's it's trailing behind, and it's moving left with the hero. Same thing, same thing. Uh, on and on it goes. So once you've done that, uh, just hit OK, and it's good to go. Now, what gets tricky is a th a third and fourth and fifth. Um, I'm. I'm sure you can link as many as you want up to like 20. I'm, I'm sure you're not going to do that, but the important thing is with the third, now you're taking everything that you said in the second uh, variable and you're comparing the third variable to the second. Uh, so you can see that this uh, is now being compared we're getting the coordinates of this graphic and we are comparing it uh, to the second. So you, you have a, like this is your phasing again to check if the second uh, image moved. And if it didn't, then line up on top of the second image. This is absolutely brilliant stuff. I I I've applaud Kenton for, for figuring this out. I've been trying to think technically and on how and I wasn't able to so um, you know a big big shout out to to him on that uh, and congrats like this is this is all all 100% him I've been trying to find and copying and trying to glue all these ideas together but I couldn't figure it out so and now now he's he's shown me it's just re really cool really cool um, so same thing, uh, except uh, you are now checking as the f the follower. Uh, so here's second follower, um, and uh, not as yeah, as as the main character. So you're comparing this the coordinates of the second uh, follower in in all these, and then comparing. Here's your third variable with the second. So if third is less than follower, so if it's right behind the second image, then move along with it and vice versa and vice versa. Um, the other thing that's very important and what what will happen is um, these are all parallel processes and they're the same as the characters. This is below the character, 
and we already went through why it needs to be a parallel process and the same as the character is so that it's not um, uh, auto running um, uh, the, the character as a as below or forbidding any event overlap because if if it wasn't the same as a character so if it was below or if it was above or if it was an auto run or below or same or above um, what would happen is uh, the character and the events would start passing through um, in inanimate objects and I, I noticed this uh, while I was trying to code the other um, trying to do the other coding on the uh, the original um, script you didn't get to see it but what was happening was um, the character was was bouncing through uh, objects and and uh, bouncing through myself all over the map and it was because I was I was uh, comparing myself to uh, the uh, event or sprite image that was already on the screen and what I needed to do was create an event sprite that would take the place of the uh, sprite image and then move along rather than moving this event because this event is or the event that was seen on the other uh, I, I could pull it up I'm not going to uh, uh, needed to be on every map and and that's that's what's what's key so once you've mapped all those things and I, I'll just give you one last chance to take a look at all the variables. So here's all the variables. Uh, uh, just make them really nice and clean and just have a separate page for the entire Caterpillar system so it doesn't get um, confusing. And uh, also the um, control switches. You can make an entire uh, page. Like uh, I know he made one for the airships that we didn't get a chance to look at, but um, just make those those three on a, on a separate page. Uh, then you just test it and uh, you should be good to go. So that's, that's all very, very exciting. Um, as you can see, it, it, it works uh, between maps um, uh, very, very quickly. Um, you, what you can do is uh, you can make this um, uh, transparent even if you wanted to hide the the image. Um, if if you have no choice and it needs to be in a very small uh, separate space, I, I I wasn't thinking how I could do this uh, perfectly, but uh, just make sure that the original image is is set so that it can't be seen. Um, in fact, uh, oh, I have a better idea. Um, take the appear character and, um, here, delete this page and put it in the, in the auto run. So that, that's, that's, that's a good idea. So, uh, follow, uh, oh, right, 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 right. We deleted, we deleted him. That's why he's not showing up. Uh, and um, put the uh, the the appear character to be on here. Yes, um, as part of uh, the auto run positioning. From there, only if this is on. Um, shoot, I'm gonna have to copy and paste all this. Well, I'll just show you this last little bit. This this should be correct. Uh, turn that off. Pair character. If it's in a small small space, um, and yeah, just make sure that's that's blank. Apply it, and uh, watch this run, and you should be just fine. Um, I'll move this over. Should be right. So we have all our characters here. And we don't. And there you go. And you didn't see the, the image pop up in this little section. We can just double check that. 
Uh, so it, it feels as fresh as can be. Oh, no, she's there. Um, what did I do wrong? Um, Hmm. Ah, uh, perhaps um just make this a uh, action button. Uh it doesn't need to really be part of anything I, I'm sure you uh, pro developers could uh, <laughs> figure this out I, I, I think that was that was the correct formula though there we go okay so there you go um, let's see if it happens again interesting so it only appears to work one time on the map rather than multiple times. I'm, I'm not sure why. Uh, it, anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, close this here. This has been a, a full, full Caterpillar tutorial event and also moving uh, the character with you to multiple maps and uh, hopefully uh, able to um, have them uh, appear under you or, or under the uh the character uh, seamlessly i'm gonna call it off here uh signing off uh this is i guess a another rpg maker tutorial i hope i hope it helps i feel like this is one of the the first complete uh uh caterpillar tutorials so we have basics now here's the uh the entire thing i hope that this is helpful for your rpg maker game i'll post everything and um how to, uh, un oh, that was one last thing. Um, if you want to use this file, um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, export the file using the RAR. Um, when I opened it, uh, it wouldn't load the correct images. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to fill um, the templates with these character images to start. You're also going to have to give the the, the tiles you're gonna to have to map the uh, the tile sets because it wasn't opening with the correct tile sets so just make sure each one is is mapped with a tile set here and finally um, it was missing the uh, window graphics vehicle graphics and game over graphics so if you do plan on using it just check to make sure that all the images are filled and that all the images are filled with these uh, sprite images because I think some of them, some of them, yeah, turned out uh, black because uh, they were missing um, character sprites. All right, I'm going to sign off now uh, and I hope this was helpful. All right, peace out.